Okay, welcome to the official Flashpoint product firmware update video. How do you update your Flashpoint flashes and radios with Windows 7 or Windows 10? All updates require a micro USB or USB-C cable. If you see a square USB port, you could just ignore it. That's for an R1 or R2 bridge radio. Here's some important things to remember. First of all, remove your batteries before you start your firmware update process. If you have an Explorer, remove the battery and then hold down the power button for a couple seconds. Everything we do will be right-clicking and running as administrator. We're not going to double-click on any installation or any icons. Don't connect any of your products to your computer using the USB cord until we're already in the middle of the update process. If you see a pop-up in the corner with Microsoft telling you that it's going to look for the latest update for your drivers, don't let it. Click on it and click skip. The micro USB or USB-C ports are located on the left side of all your transmitters. On the left side of all your speed lights except the micro which has it on the right side next to the battery. On the right side of the streak light underneath a rubber cover and on the top of all the Explorer units. Port for your Evolve is directly below the power switch underneath the rubber cap and for the Evolve 200 Pro it's on the bottom of the body. Microsoft added an additional level of security for Windows 10 users so if you are a Windows 10 user follow along in this step-by-step -step guide. First the easiest way to get to our page is just to google flashpoint update and it'll take you straight to the update page. If you're a Windows 10 user scroll down to the bottom of the page on the left hand side after the products are listed and you will see a code to copy that you can run on your Windows 10 computer. The code says bcedit.exe slash set no integrity checks on. Select that text and copy it using control C or right click and click copy. Next you're going to right click on the start button and you're going to click Windows PowerShell administrator. Paste that command that we just copied into there and hit enter. Now if you're lucky it will say the operation completed successfully but if not it's protected by the secure boot and we're going to have to do some additional steps including restarting the computer. So close all your programs and save all your work and then go down to the start key in the corner click on that hold the shift key while you click on restart. After you do that, you're going to end up in a blue screen. You're going to choose the troubleshoot option. From the next screen, you're going to choose the advanced options. From the next screen, you will choose startup settings. You will not choose startup repair, but you will choose startup settings. The next screen is just going to show you a bunch of options that are going to be available to you afterwards. And the restart button, go ahead and click the restart button. Once your computer restarts, you'll see a bunch of options. We want option number seven, so you must hit the F7 key on your keyboard. F7. After that, your computer is going to restart, and you can proceed following the same instructions as Windows 7 users. To update your Flashpoint products, Google Update Flashpoint and just hit enter. It should be the first result. Scroll down to the product that you want to update. You can see a picture of each product and choose the product you want to update. Underneath it are the buttons for the different brands that that product is available in. For example, the speed lights are available in Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, etc. On the button of the firmware file you're trying to download, you'll see it says the brand that the device is made for, and also in parentheses F1, F2, or F3. This tells you which installer you need to use, the F1, F2, or F3 installer. The F1 and the F2 installer tools are available for Windows only, and the F3 installer tool is available for Windows or Mac. So in this example, we're going to update a Zoom Lion flash for Nikon. We're going to scroll down to the picture of the Zoom Lion and choose the Nikon button. You'll notice that next to the word Nikon, it says F1, telling us that we're going to need to use the F1 installer. Click the box to download the update file, which is in a zipped form. We're going to need to unzip the file before we can use it. Now scroll up and download the F1 tool if you haven't already. Once they've both finished downloading, navigate to the folder where the downloads are located. You'll see two zip files. You need to right click on each one and extract them into that location. Depending on your zip tool, you might have a different interface. For WinRAR, choose extract here. I believe for WinZip, you can also right click and choose extract here. Make sure to unzip both the installer program and the zip file of the firmware file that you want to update. Now we're going to install the F1 updater tool. It's very important that whenever you install, you right click and click run as administrator. This is going to allow all the special permissions to recognize your device connecting to the computer. Just a reminder, don't connect any USB devices until we've completed the installation and we're already running the installer. Once the installer begins, click next. You can read the license agreement if you want. Click I agree to the terms and click next. It doesn't matter what name you put over here, I'll usually just put in a string of random characters. 
You should leave this alone. It's just the location that the program is going to be installed to. It's very normal and standard. You should leave this alone as well. You can install shortcuts for each user if you'd like, but it's fine to leave it alone in most cases. Now the installer is complete. Now we're going to click finish. And now comes the most important part, the driver installation, which will begin automatically. The device driver installation will pop up. Just click next and the black box will pop up as well. You can ignore that. Once you've clicked next, the drivers will install properly. You'll see green checkboxes, and now you're finished the installation. At any point in this installation or the process, if Windows pops up asking you if you agree or you want to allow or to accept, you should always click yes to allow the proper permissions for your installation and for the tool to run properly. Now you should navigate to your desktop and you'll see the F1 tool shortcut there. Once again, right click it and click run as administrator. This is very important. Now you'll choose select file. When you select file, you're going to navigate to your downloads folder, which is where you downloaded the firmware file and you unzipped it to. The program is only going to show you the compatible files. So if you don't see the FRI file, then you're not in the right place or you haven't unzipped it yet. Make sure you unzipped the FRI file to the correct location. And then you should see the FRI file in the folder where you unzipped it. Once again, the firmware tool will only show you FRI files, which is the files that the F1 tool uses. Now is the time to connect our device with the USB cord to the computer. Remember, remove all your batteries. If your device is an Explorer unit, after removing the battery, hold down the power button for a couple of seconds. This will remove any extra power that's stored inside the device, which could affect the connection between it and the computer. You might even see the screen flash as it discharges the extra energy. Once you've connected your product to the computer, click connect. If you see an error message, connect fail, it could mean a few things. It could mean that you've left the batteries in your product. It could mean that you did not run the installer properly as administrator and the drivers did not install properly. Or it could mean that you're using a substandard USB cable. Most people have a lot of USB cables lying around. Some have better quality than others. So your best bet is going to be using a USB cable that came with a phone or other professional device. Those will be higher quality than, say, a phone charger that you got at the gas station. Try a different USB cord. And also, on your computer, try a different USB port if you see this connection fail error message. Also, make sure that the device is switched off. Very important. If this is the first time you've connected this device to your computer, you're going to notice a pop-up in the bottom right corner installing device driver software. You want to immediately stop this. So click on it as fast as you can and click skip obtaining driver information. You want the computer to use the device driver that you installed and not something that it's going to download from a Windows update. If you notice after clicking skip a few seconds later, it will recognize the device and the green check mark will appear you can close that dialog box. Now you can click connect. The F1 tool will tell you that the connection has completed successfully. Then you can just click the upgrade button to update your product. During the update, don't disconnect the USB cord or move the product around too much. Once it says upgrade complete, you can click the disconnect button. Once you click the disconnect button, it's safe to unplug your device from the computer and you can exit the program or choose other files and update other products as needed. Let's do an F2 firmware file. We're gonna update an Evolve 200 flash. We're gonna download the firmware file for that as well as the F2 installer tool. Once they're finished downloading, we're gonna to navigate to the download folder where they've been saved. The F2 tool does not come zipped, but the firmware file does. So you can just right click on the F2 installer and run it as administrator. You'll notice that I forgot to unzip the firmware file and this is going to trip me up later and I'm going to have to come back and do it. The interface of the installer is pretty much the same. You agree to the terms, you can put in your name or any name you'd like, you can agree at the location, you can either install a shortcut for yourself only or for all the users on the computer and click finish. Once again, after clicking finish, the driver installation tool is going to pop up and this is very important. So click next and make sure that it installs with the green check marks. If this didn't happen, it could be that you did not run the tool as administrator. Now we're going to navigate to the desktop, right click on the F2 tool shortcut and run as administrator. You'll notice that the box on the top device connected is empty. Once you've connected the proper device after having removed the battery and switched it off, this box will populate automatically with the device that's connected. Once again, since this is the first time I've connected to this computer, a little box is going to pop up in the corner 
as Windows attempts to connect to Windows Update and update the drivers. I want to immediately click on that and skip that process because I don't want Windows using the drivers that it finds from Windows Update. I want it to use the correct drivers which we've installed when we installed the program. If you don't skip this, Windows might install the wrong firmware file. You can now see that the computers recognize the device and the installer did as well and populated the box with the device that it has recognized. Now I'm going to attempt to select the file from the downloads folder and I'll realize that I forgot to unzip the file. So I'm going to go to the Evolve Zip firmware file and unzip it. Very often you can right button drag with the mouse and drop it in an empty space in that folder and choose extract or you can just right click on the zip file and choose extract here. Now we're going to go to the F2 firmware tool, navigate to downloads and inside the folder that we've unzipped you'll find the DFU file which is the type of file that's used by the F2 installer. Once again the F2 installer will only show you DFU files, which is the type of file that it uses. You have to navigate to the folder that you've unzipped, and there will be the firmware file that you're installing. It shows file correctly uploaded, so we're going to click Upgrade. You can watch the progress on the green bar at the bottom of the screen. Don't disconnect or shake the device or risk disconnecting it during upgrade. Disconnecting the device during upgrade can damage the product. The whole process of an update will usually take between 15 and 30 seconds. Once it's complete, you can click Quit and disconnect the device, or if you have other devices to update, you can just unplug the device and plug in the new one to update that one as well. All right, let's go ahead and look at updating a F3 item. In this case, we're gonna update a Sony R2 Pro Mark II transmitter. So let's download the file for the, the firmware file for the device. And then we also have to download the F3 tool, just like it shows on the button. Since we're using Windows, we'll download the F3 tool for Windows. And then when they're finished downloading, we're gonna click show in folder. Here they are. For each one, we're gonna right click and click extract here. And so we've got the bin file, the F3 firmware tool uses bin files, and we've got an F3 folder. We're gonna open the F3 folder, right click the installer, and click run as administrator. Again, that's very important. Once we've run that as administrator, we're going to select file and then we're going to navigate to our downloads and there is our bin file for the R2 Pro Mark II for Sony. We're going to click open. Now the correct file has been chosen. Now, since we've run everything as administrator, we're going to connect our USB cord to our transmitter with the batteries removed. Again, if Windows pops up in the right corner about updating the drive, we're going to immediately click on it and then we're going to click skip. It's very important that you click skip so that Windows doesn't install the incorrect drivers. Since we've clicked skip, now we're going to wait. It's going to ignore the Windows update and use the drivers that we've already installed. And now we'll click close. You'll notice that the device is listed as connected. We're going to click update. And you can watch the progress bar here. And now it says update device success. We're done. You can click exit out and you're finished updating. One more important note, if you find that you can't turn on your device after doing an update, you probably installed the wrong update file. So go back and check and make sure you've done the file for the correct type of product and for the correct version. You can't install, for example, the firmware for a Canon version onto a Sony device or vice versa. Check all those. If for some reason your product won't turn on, you can always just install the firmware again. The firmware update tool should work even if the device won't power on. Follow the same steps. Make sure you get the correct firmware file and run the update again, and then you should be able to turn it on successfully.